happy fall. Time for soup. Welcome back to At The Table. Today we are talking all about pumpkin soup and we are making three different types of pumpkin soup. Um, and it's actually one base recipe and then you can spin that into a couple of different flavors. And this is a recipe from Cooking Light Magazine. Um, and actually, we're gonna do a little bit of a spin to it. So if you are ever in a situation where you can't find pumpkin in the grocery stores, um, whether it is the fact that it's all been sold out or um, maybe they just don't have it yet, whatever the case may be, you can actually use butternut squash in place of that. So we are actually gonna be doing more of a butternut squash soup in three different ways in place of that pumpkin, but you can do that interchangeably. And that is one of the great things about our fall produce is a lot of these, um, these vegetables that we enjoy during the fall that are those savory, hearty vegetables, um, can't actually be interchanged. So you could even go for something like an acorn squash um, if you choose that as well. They all have a slightly different flavor. Um, I love butternut squash and it's a little bit, to me, um, more savory than your pumpkin. Your pumpkin might be a little bit sweeter depending on the variety that you get. Um, but they, and acorn squash is a little bit different than that. So they're all slightly different, but they can all be intermixed to make your own um, variety. So what we're gonna start with today is that butternut squash. Um, these are notoriously difficult to cut, so we'll see how I do today. But um, you can also buy this pre-cut. So if you either have issues with your, with your hands or um, maybe you just don't have the time to, to spend on cutting up your butternut squash, um, you can actually buy it pre-chopped and it's already in those little cubes. So we need it to be chopped into, um, into those little half inch cubes and we want about four cups of butternut squash. So first thing is to start with that really sharp knife. If you don't have a sharp knife, you won't be able to do that so easily. Um, and what I like to do is cut off the top and the bottom. And I did go ahead and rinse my butternut squash really well. Um, sometimes you might find some dirt on the outside, so just wanna make sure that it's rinsed pretty well. So I'm gonna make sure that my hand is completely away from the bottom of the cutting board, and I'm just gonna work my way down. There we go. And then just like a pumpkin would, you've got those seeds inside. So what you'll have to do is scoop all of those out with a spoon, or you could also um, use a little paring knife as well if you need to do that. And just like your pumpkin seeds, you can actually bake these seeds um, and put them on top. So. One of our varieties is some of the different toppings that you can add to this, this soup. And one of them is throwing some pumpkin seeds on top, which I love. They make such a good snack. And when you're shopping for pumpkin, um, there are some different types of pumpkins out there. There are some that are meant purely for decoration, and then there are some that we can eat. So when you're looking for pumpkins to eat, um, one of the words, the phrases that we'll see a lot is um, pumpkin pie pumpkins. And those are going to be smaller. They're a little bit easier to manage than like your big jack-o'-lantern type pumpkins. And they are meant for baking. Of course, they're called a pumpkin pie pumpkin because they're used for uh, making pumpkin pie. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this, I'm gonna chop this into those smaller pieces. It's a little bit more manageable. 
And one thing that if you don't even want to bother with peeling is um, to go the route of um, of baking it with that skin on and you can bake it with the skin on and then that peel actually just comes right off. It's very easy. So if you don't want to mess with peeling, this would probably be better with a, a paring knife. So I might use that for the other half of this. Um, but if you don't want to, to bother with peeling it, then you can actually um, just go ahead and bake it in the oven at about 400 or 425, depending on your oven. And um, it will just come right off after about 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. So we are just working our way around that and getting all of that peel off. Um, for this, we're actually gonna use the Instant Pot today. However, our recipe does not call for us to use the Instant Pot, but just for time's purposes, we wanna speed it up a little bit. So we're gonna throw it in the Instant Pot to let it simmer and cook down. And like I said, we're gonna cut this into those small pieces. So I'm just gonna chop this up like so. And we'll take a quick break. I'll finish up our butternut squash here and I'll see you guys back in just one second. Introducing the Star Communications app. All the tools you need in one convenient location. You can access Watch TV everywhere. Check local channel lineup. Check your Star email. View and pay your Star bill. Report troubles. Use your Star security app. Check your home voicemail. Sign up for CrowdFiber. Check your Wi-Fi speed. The list keeps going and going. Download for free from the App Store or Google Play. Hey guys, welcome back. So we are finishing up that butternut squash. Um, I mentioned earlier that a paring knife really works well for getting the skin off. So if you need to do that, you could use something like this, which is our little small paring knife, um, or even one that's a little bit longer than that would be okay. It's much easier to handle than this big um, chef's knife. So we have our butternut squash all chopped up. The next thing is our apple. So what I'm actually gonna do is just cut this guy in half and then um, we're gonna cube this as well. So I'm gonna cut it into those large pieces and then what I like to do is just flip it over if there's any spots that have um, kind of that waxy where the, the seed was. Um, I would recommend removing that because it doesn't cook down very well. I have even made an apple butter before. Um, it was kind of our favors as for our wedding. And some of the apple butter, if the that middle layer was still in there, you could definitely taste this like waxiness, um, hard waxy pieces. So you wanna make sure you remove those because it doesn't quite have a good mouth feel if you bite into that even after it's cooked. But since we're doing this cubed, um, it's kind of an odd thing to, to use the, an apple peeler or apple, sorry, apple cutter for. So I wouldn't recommend using that for this recipe. We're just doing one apple, so it's not like, it's a whole, whole lot of work anyways. And um, you're already gonna have to chop up that butternut squash as it is, so. Not like you gotta get your cutting board and stuff out just for your apple, your one apple. And our recipe does call for a Granny Smith. Um, your Granny Smiths are gonna be a little bit more tart, um, which can kind of flow with the flavors of this recipe. And I'm leaving the skin on. Um, Y'all know I like to, to leave the skin for a lot of those produce that we can eat the skin pretty easily on. Um, and I'm just leaving that on because it adds fiber. We're gonna end up blending the soup. So it'll blend up once it's cooked down, it'll be fine. There's no um, issues there. All right, so we're gonna move up this cutting board cause we don't need it anymore. And we're gonna switch over to that Instant Pot. 
So for this, oh, we'll just set this down for now. Um, we are going to turn it on saute and um, start getting it heated up a little bit. What we're gonna add to this is a little bit of onion. So I do have some pre-chopped onion. I actually bought this. This is the frozen onion. Um, you can buy it in the frozen section of the, um, the frozen produce section. And it is, um, or frozen vegetable section. It is already pre-diced, so it'll just say diced onions or chopped onions on the bag. And it's a lot easier to use than having to chop up your own onions if you struggle like I do with crying or anything else maybe happening while you're chopping up those onions. Um, I like to do that when I just don't have a lot of time. Another tip is that you could go ahead and chop up your onions and then freeze them in a freezer bag and use them. So this is just a great way to utilize that without having to spend a whole lot of time um, chopping those up. Again, we will already have your cutting board out. So if you don't, um, you know, you have your, you can easily just go ahead and chop that onion up if you wanna use a fresh onion. But just giving you guys some other options. We also will actually need to do um, garlic. So bring this back and get that chopped up really quick. Um, you can also use a garlic press for this if you would prefer to go that route. And we are gonna use three cloves of garlic. Another thing that you can find um, in that frozen vegetable section is um, actually garlic. They, they do have, um, I think it's called Doro, and then there's some other just generic brands out there, but they put crushed garlic into these little square trays and um, you can use it straight from frozen, throw it into your soup or um, whatever you're making, your stir fry, and then you don't have to worry about getting your hands all smelly or anything like that. Um, uh, of course, that's gonna be more, co uh, cost more money. So the same thing as um, if you're choosing to buy your butternut squash pre-chopped up, um, you're, you have to consider that, that pre-chopping, that extra process step is gonna cost, cost you money. So if you're trying to save, the best thing is to buy it and buy it fresh and do it yourself, chop it yourself um, or whatever. But if you're strapped for time and that's more important to you, then you do have some other options. So. I'm just going to, I always like to chop off that little hard end. Um, it doesn't quite cook down as well, although some people leave it, it's kind of personal choice. And I'm just gonna roughly chop this up. Again, we are blending this, so it's not gonna be a big deal for it to be chopped into these tiny little pieces. And then we're just gonna throw those in with our onion. So I'm gonna finish up the garlic, let this saute for about four minutes, and we'll see you guys back in just a second. Hey guys, today we're at the Sampson County Extension talking all about Ag Day. So Eileen, tell us a little bit about what is Ag Day? What are we gonna have? Ag Day is a great event that we have every other year, and we'll be having it this year on October 30th at the Agra Expo Center in downtown Clinton. We hope that you'll come join us for Ag Day. We have lots of fun-filled activities for you, things like cow milking, learning how to paint a barn quilt, uh, a drone demonstration, and uh, pony rides, all kinds of fun activities and things to see you'll be able to stand right beside a full-size combine or tractor. Um, think about all the things you see as you travel through Sampson County and agriculture that's growing around you and being harvested. Those are some of the things that you'll see. I can't wait. We also are gonna have live music, um, food trucks. We've got a comedian and a magician. So it will definitely be fun for the whole family. Free admission. That's right, admission and is free. Um, and what are our some hours? of the food is going to be free. We're going to have oh, yeah. free ice cream. 
Um, but like Sydney said, lots of food trucks, lots of variety of food for you to choose from. So check us out October 30th. We can't wait to see you guys there. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. All right, guys, we have our apples and our um, butternut squash ready to go. So we have our onion and our garlic already sauteed. We're gonna throw this in. And um, you also keep in mind that in the Instant Pot, you don't quite need to cook things for as long. So it's maybe just a minute of sauteing. I was thinking about what we would do if we were in the pot. So it's about um, a third of the time of what you need to cook things in the Instant Pot compared to things or an electric pressure cooker. You could possibly not have an Instant Pot brand. There's all kinds of brands out there. Um, but if you, you would do about a third of the time. So if the pot says cook this for four minutes, you would cook for maybe a minute, minute and a half. Um, if it says 25 minutes, which is what this recipe actually requires for you to simmer it on, um, since it's just a simmer on low and this is gonna be high heat, I think we're actually gonna cook this for maybe eight minutes and then do a quick release. So that way it'll be, um, it won't be overdone in our pot. But again, we're just gonna be blending all of this up. If it's a little overdone, it's not a big deal. So what I'm doing next, putting on gloves because I'm about to handle something very spicy and I don't want any residue left on my fingers um, that could potentially hurt me later on. <laughs> no matter where it is, I touch my eye or something like that, it would not be pretty. So this is um, chipotle chilies in an adobo sauce. They are very spicy, they smell spicy. Um, I have them actually left over from another recipe that I did. I don't tend to use these very frequently, but they do have really great flavor. Um, so they're something that's really great to have on hand. You can buy the little can of the chipotle chili peppers and then throw them into a freezer bag and freeze them, grab one out when you need it. So we are just adding one pepper. And just like if you were handling jalapenos, it's probably not a bad idea to put on gloves um, unless you just wanna go for it and see what happens, take your chances. But that will be all that we're doing. And then I'm actually just gonna turn this off we're gonna add just a little bit of salt to our pot. Not much. You could also wait and salt at the very end without really needing to do that now. And then we are going to add our, um, our liquid. So make sure I'm not forgetting anything else. Yep we are going to add our chicken broth. So you need three cups of, um, we have chicken broth here, I think it's fine. You could use vegetable stock instead. It's actually what the recipe calls for. Um, I'm gonna do a mix of uh, chicken broth and water. So we're just gonna add a little bit of water to this as well. So I did chicken stock, half chicken stock, half water, um, and that's about the level that you want it to be at. Um, you have other options. If you don't have broth, you could absolutely just do water for the whole thing, um, but we just want our uh, vegetables and our apples to be covered just a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna throw on our lid 
and cook it. And you wanna make sure that you're on sealing and then pressure cook. And we'll do, let's do actually seven or eight minutes. So we'll do those eight minutes and then um, it'll come up to pressure and do its thing. While that is cooking, we're gonna actually transition over to the stovetop here and make our chorizo sausage. Um, chorizo is a Mexican sausage um, that is really, really good. Um, I feel like I get it a lot in when I go to a Mexican res restaurant. Um, I don't, I have not cooked with it before, so this will be my first time cooking with it, but it was the only kind that I could find in our grocery store in Food Line was by the other sausage and bacon, that section. So um, it says chorizo sausage on it, and you wanna make sure you're reading it properly. This says um, it does have to be cooked, and then also you wanna remove the casing before you're cooking it. So um, our recipe calls for about an ounce, and this whole package was 16 ounces with, with about six um, pieces of sausage in there. So uh, we're gonna just use the whole thing. And this is one of the options you could have as um, something different in how to prepare this pumpkin soup, pumpkin butternut squash soup. So we've got our oil in our pan and I'm just gonna cut the end of that off and then just push it on in there. And it does, we'll have a little bit of spice, but it's not too spicy. Um, so we are just gonna cook this up in your pan, just like you would regular sausage. Um, and once we come back, this will be done, as well as our um, pumpkin butternut squash soup. So we'll take a break. We'll see you guys back in just one second. After completing my contract, I still have to buy out of it. Come on, here's your sign. Switch to the sign that's keeping homes secure and customers happy all over the area. Security from Star Communications. We pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick, friendly service every time. Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. All right, so our um, butternut squash soup is pretty much done. So the last thing is to add a little bit of cinnamon to this. This is just about half a teaspoon, so not much at all. I'm gonna give it a little stir. And then we're gonna go blend it all up. So I'll actually leave that in there. So I'm just gonna carry this over to our blender. So we got next to us over here. And similar to if you were doing um, like a tomato soup or something like that, we tend to want it nice and creamy. So same thing here. Um, these are a little bit more in chunks right now. So we wanna get it nice and creamy for our recipe, for eating, I guess. So I'm just gonna do about half of this mixture at a time. So you want it to blend up really well. Splashing everywhere. And you could pour this into if that's easier for you. But just remember if you're doing it fresh out of an instant pot or an electric pressure cooker, it's gonna, your pot itself is gonna be warm. So be careful as you're handling that. All right, so we're gonna do about that much. And we will blend it. Doesn't take much. Um, this is a pretty high powered blender. You could also do it in a food processor or use an immersion blender if you have one of those little handheld immersion blenders. And I'm just gonna get a little bit more. And then I'm gonna show you guys a couple different varieties of how you can make that, you can use this. So this is like our base of our soup.
You could also just blend half and then um, use the other half, keep the other half in chunks if you want it to be a little more chunky. <laughs> Pretty good, so we'll carry this over to our um, little station over here to disperse our soup into our bowls. And I'll show you guys the different varieties we have. Put that guy out of the way to give us a little more room. So what we have um, are a couple different toppings. So like I said, this is your base. So you could start with this and that'd be it. You could just have your soup already made in your bowl. And I'm going to put it in each of these and show you how you can switch this thing up a little bit. So our other options, of course, we use that chorizo. One thing I did want to mention is that with your chorizo, um, I added oil to the pan. I forgot how greasy chorizo can be. So you probably don't even need oil. It's greasy enough to kind of coat the pan at the bottom. So you could eliminate that. I did also still, um, put my chorizo, once it's cooked, I put it into a little bowl with a paper towel to kind of drain some of that fat. So you do kind of want to drain it. Um, there is a good amount of excess grease on that. So your other options are to add a little bit of chorizo if you want some protein. So you could sprinkle that in and mix it all up. Um, so that is soup number two. And then your third option is to go um, vegetarian and do some of these different toppings. So if you still want a little bit of protein, but you're trying not to um, choose meat as an option, you can sprinkle with some of these pumpkin seeds. I did roast these in the same pan as what my chorizo was in. Pumpkin seeds typically come um, in a little container. They are green actually when you're buying them at the store. So when you're pulling them out of your your pumpkin or your butternut squash or whatever, and you're looking at those squash seeds and they're white, it usually has a hole around the outside. And what you're seeing when you're buying them in the store is they're already shelled. So they're taking off that shell and you're eating that innermost part. Um, the, for pumpkin seeds, not of course, things like sunflower seeds, not everything we eat the whole, but for our uh, pumpkin seeds, you can actually, they're palatable, you can actually eat the outside, um, but the inside is where a lot of those nutrients are. You get a little extra fiber with that outer hole, but with the inside, you get um, a lot more nutrients as well. So we're gonna do a little pumpkin seed, um, pumpkin seeds, a little bit of cilantro. You could even put that on your base as well to make it look pretty. And then you could also add like a spoonful of, um, sour cream or uh, Greek yogurt if you have that, whatever you have on hand. This is light sour cream, so it's a little bit leaner. But these are some different options. This would be a really great recipe if you're having folks over and you wanna have a variety of things that they can add to their soups. Of course, October is a time where we start to see more soups and stews. So thinking of ways we can snazz them up a little bit, do something a little different, um, will hopefully be a fun way to consume them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about this butternut squash soup and which variety you tried, and we'll see you guys back next time.